Hey guys, it's Kay. I hope you're all well. Now in today's video, I want to look at installing Android TV 11 on your Raspberry Pi 4 or Pi 400. Now, as you can see here, I've got a Raspberry Pi 4 running Android TV 11. And to be perfectly honest, it's running very smoothly and it's handling everything I'm throwing at it. And that includes media, gaming. Now, to get Android TV running on the Raspberry Pi, we need to use a special build of Lineage OS. And thanks to Kongster Kang and his team, that's exactly what we're going to do. The only issue of this Android TV build on your Raspberry Pi is that it doesn't have support for hardware video decoding and encoding, but it does feature hardware accelerated graphics, which means you should be able to run most apps as long as they don't rely on video decoding. If you're new to the channel and you want to stay up to date with the latest tech tutorials, reviews and unboxings, I do everything including Fire Stick, Raspberry Pi and Android TV tips and tricks. So subscribe and hit the notification button. So as you can see, video works very well and I think we're at 1080p here working smoothly. Now you can see YouTube's working pretty well, no issues, all very fluid, and there were no problems with signing into my account. Now gaming also works flawlessly, and I was able to download a couple of games. Now this is a car game I downloaded, and you can see the graphics and sound all work flawlessly together. There's no lags or stuttering. And surprisingly, I got a lot of fun out of this shot game. Now, to get this installed on your Raspberry Pi 4, we're going to need to download a few files. So, open up your browser and head on over to kongstakang.com. And on the top right corner, you'll see a menu. Just scroll down to Raspberry Pi 4 and select it. And here we can see we've got all different versions of Android going all the way back to version 9. Now, I have done a video of how to install Android TV 10 and Android 10 on your Raspberry Pi 4. And I'll leave a link in the description below where you can watch this. But for this video, we're going to choose Android TV 11. And we get a brief introduction from Kongster Kang telling us it's his build of Lineage 18.1 for Android TV. And we just need to scroll down until we get to his download link. Click on it and it will take you to another page to download his version of Lineage. Click on Start Download. And you'll get a selection of mirror sites and I just chose the closest one to me. Then we just go back to the main Kongster Kang download page. And there's one more file we need to download. So just scroll down. And keep going down until you get to the section where it says how to install gapps. And this is going to tell us how to install Google Play Store on our Android TV install. And it basically just involves installing the correct version of gapps onto your Android installation. And in this case, we need to download the version with TV stock in its name. Okay, so if we click on the Open gapps link there, we'll be directed to the SourceForge download page, and we need to find the correct version. So let's click on the latest folder, and we're looking for a file with TV stock in its file name, and it looks like it's the top one, which is the latest one. And it will begin downloading automatically once it's counted down. Okay, so you can see I've got my two files here. I've got my Lineage version 18.1 and I've got my gapps TV stock version. Now we need to get the Lineage operating system onto an SD card. And to do this, I'm using the Raspberry Pi imager. All downloads in the description below, guys. And the first thing we do is choose operating system and we scroll down to custom and then browse to where you downloaded the file and you just select it. And then choose the SD card you've got selected in your PC. And the final thing you do is click on write. And finally confirm. Now this can take anywhere up to 10 minutes and you should get a final message when it's done. Now the other thing we're going to do is transfer a copy of the gapps we downloaded onto a USB stick. And we're going to use this to install gapps once we've got Lineage installed on the Raspberry Pi. Now once you've done that, you can go ahead and insert the SD card into your Raspberry Pi and boot up. Now the first boot will take a few minutes, so just bear with it. Okay, so once you're in, you can see it's pretty bare at the moment. So this is Android 11 without the Google Play Store. But we can add a few things to spice it up. And the first thing we're going to do is add a couple of favourites. And we're going to add the file manager. And we're also going to add the settings. To add the Google Play Store, we need to go into settings. And then select device preferences. And then click on about. And scroll down to build. And then just keep clicking on it until you get confirmation you've got developer settings. And now when you go back into device preferences, you'll see a menu option for developer options. And in here, we want to make sure Advanced Reboot is enabled. Back on your home screen, click on the File Manager. And now you can plug in your USB stick, the one you copied the gapps download onto. Okay, there it is, Untitled. Now if I click on it, you'll be able to see that the gapps is there. So I'm going to copy this gapps zip from my USB onto my SD card on my Raspberry Pi 4, which we're now using to run Android TV 11 on. So now if I click on the Raspberry Pi SD card, we can see it's there in the root file system. Okay, back on the home page, if we click on Settings, Device Preferences, Reboot, and Reboot to Recovery. Okay, so the Raspberry Pi will reboot into recovery mode, and you'll get the following Team Win window. So if we just swipe to allow modifications, 
and we'll get the following options. We need to choose the install option. Now if all went well and you did copy the gapp zip file to your root directory on your SD card, you should see it here. And we simply just select it and swipe to confirm flash. Now the flash shouldn't take that long, up to five minutes at the most. And when that's done, we'll get the option to wipe Dalvik or reboot. We need to click on wipe Dalvik. And then as it says, swipe to wipe. And then finally we click on reboot system. And if we give this a few minutes, it will finally reboot into Android TV 11. We'll then be presented with the option to set up our controller. Now I'm using my PS4 controller wired, but you could just as easily use a wireless Bluetooth controller. Okay, now it's asking us to set up our back button and our home button. So we just click on the respective buttons on our controller. Now, once you've done that, you'll get the option to select your language. Now I'm gonna choose English. And now you get a chance to set up your network connection. So you could set up your Wi-Fi connection if you have one. And then I select continue. And then you get your chance to sign into your Google account. And then you get the option to sign in using your phone or computer or use your remote. I'm gonna use my remote. And from here, you just log into your Google account as normal. And then click on accept. For location services, I'm gonna do no. And another no here. And no thanks to Google Assistant because it's not working anyway. Okay, so we get a nice little introduction here. Your Raspberry Pi is powered by Android TV. Let's walk through the features of your device. Now it mentions here, you can get your apps from the Google Play Store. I must say this is pretty cool from the Kongster Kang team. And then it goes on to say, we've got the option to talk to Google Assistant. And finally, the option to cast to your TV. And if we do the final click, we're gonna to get to our home screen. And as you can see, there's a whole lot more going on here. We've got the movies, we've got apps. And if I click on the add favorites, I can add my Google Play Store from here. And again, I think I'm gonna add YouTube. Now guys, there's a few things we can do to optimize the system on the Raspberry Pi 4. So if we click on settings and scroll down to device preferences, and from here, scroll down to Raspberry Pi settings. Now there's a number of things you can do here, but I'm gonna concentrate on the display resolution, which you can decrease to improve the performance of Android TV on your Raspberry Pi. Now, if you scroll down from here, you'll come to the overclock section. So this is pretty handy. You can overclock your Raspberry Pi 4 straight from here. Now, of course, make sure you've got the proper cooling solution on your Raspberry Pi to do this. I think I'm gonna go for 2000 megahertz. Now this will of course update your config.txt file automatically for you. There's some other cool little options here. You've got the option to enable remote access via SSH. So if you do install this Android version, it's worth a look in here to see what else you can do. Overall, I must say, I'm very impressed what the Kongster Kang team have done here. They seem to make it easier and faster to install Android TV on your Raspberry Pi 4 every time they do a new install. Anyway guys, if you found this video helpful, give us a like and maybe even a subscribe. And I'll see you all in the next one.